In order to understand the internal rate of return, there are three things you need to do. You need to understand the impact of discount rates on net present value, then calculate the internal rate of return, and finish with interpreting the outcome of the IRR calculation. The more comfortable you are with MPV, the easier it will be to understand IRR. Let's work through an example to illustrate those three steps. In the case of project A, this is the expected cash flow profile. In return for an upfront investment of $1,000, we expect $1,600 of nominal benefits, equally split over four years, $400 per year. This is before we apply the time value of money. I assume you have done net present value calculations before, so you probably know that the present values of these future benefits will shrink if we apply a discount rate that is higher than zero. For example, if we apply a discount rate of 10%, then the present values of the future benefits will shrink substantially versus the nominal amounts, with an MPV of $268 as a result. If we apply a higher discount rate of 20%, then the present values of the future benefits will shrink a lot more, with an MPV of $35 as a result. IRR takes those if-then examples to their logical conclusion. What discount rate does it take to get to an MPV of zero? The fast way of calculating IRR is to use Excel. The IRR formula in cell B3 takes the values in cell B2 through F2 and calculates the IRR percentage. If we apply a discount rate of 21.86%, then we push project A to a net present value of exactly zero. If you want to be absolutely sure that this is the correct IRR, then use the percentage to discount the nominal amounts to their present values. And when you add up those five numbers, you will see that the MPV is indeed zero. Let's round the IRR to 22% to keep the rest of our discussion simple. So what does 22% mean? How do we interpret this internal rate of return? You can think of IRR as an if-then thought experiment. If the discount rate would be 22%, then the MPV of the project would be zero. But the actual discount rate in use is 20%. So is this a good or a bad outcome? If the internal rate of return is 22%, but the actual discount rate in use is 20%, then the IRR is two percentage points ahead of the target, hence worth doing. The IRR is exceeding the target. We have looked at project A in isolation. There are four other projects competing for the same investment money. Project B with an IRR of 27%, project C with an IRR of 18%, project D with an IRR of 29%, and project E with an IRR of 23%. If we compare each of these projects with the discount rate in use of 20%, then project A is 2 percentage points above the discount rate. Project B is 7 percentage points above the discount rate. Project C is 2 percentage points below the discount rate and doesn't make the cut. Project D is 9 percentage points above the discount rate. And project E is 3 percentage points above the discount rate. The higher the IRR, the more attractive the project. So out of this list, project D is the winner.